everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the distinctive honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist, educator, blogger, synth player, keyboard player, songwriter, and occasional writer as well, Vicky Warwick. Yay! Hi, <laughs> thank you for having me. My pleasure. Almost ran out of time just describing all the stuff that you do, Vicky. <laughs> You're a very, very busy person playing bass, but as always, we like to go back to the past. How did you get started in music and in particular on bass? So, you know, I always loved music, but when I was younger, I felt like I hadn't really found my instrument. I didn't, you know, in school, you know, people pick their flute or their clarinet or whatever it might be, but I did, wasn't drawn to any of those. And eventually bass was the instrument. I have a uh, one of my best friends growing up, her family were very musical. Her dad was a bass player, is a bass player. And uh, at the time she has, she lives on this old farm and there's a barn conversion that's like the rehearsal room. So she has all the instruments set up, you know, that her, her dad, her dad's band would use. And so we started a band when we were 12. And it, I, <laughs> I think like most people for bass, it was kind of, the thing that was left or, or you know some somebody said oh well you can you can do this and so it was thrust at me and it was great I loved that it was so immediate you know I could I could get a sound out of it immediately mm -hmm. and that was it I was hooked and I started taking lessons and went to music college in London I went to a, a small contemporary music school where my degree was in in bass and popular music performance so that was it. Then I was living in London doing that and I didn't even get to finish my degree before a job offer came along, which was amazing. I got offered to join the kind of in-house band at a production company in the UK called Xenomania, who were, you know, trying to be like, you know, a Motown, like, like everybody does, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's always the goal. But, and they were great. They were, they were producing a, a large chunk of, of the music that was on the radio at that time and yeah and I worked for them for a while as an in-house bass player they had an in-house band that would go and do showcases and gigs and tours for their artists and yeah that was great that was my first step in 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 the industry door I worked there for a while and then I actually returned to finish my degree and then was just out in, in London, nice. you know, trying, to, trying to get work and, and keep playing bass. Nice. Well, and I know a lot of people may have seen you playing with Big Time Rush and or if they even watch TV because you turn up in like on Jimmy Kimmel or you know, all kinds of shows. You're very in demand. How did all of this kind of come about? Well, I mean, you know, that's it. I've been working in the industry for over 10 years now and so it's slowly and surely you you build up that reputation you know when i was in england that company i was working for uh were very highly renowned and from that it helped me get lots of other gigs and you know whether it was tv tv things or, or recording things i was in a band for a bit but you know it's still very old fashioned this industry in the sense that you it's all people and, and who you know and and it's just yeah, forming your own reputation that way. And it, it is interesting because for example, there's there's been so, a, a few musicians that have written books on how to exist in New York City and because it's such a project of its own with so much competition and so many venues and all the things. But one of the things they always come back to is trying to be the kind of person that everybody wants to work with and seeing how many acts and all the places that you're working, I would have to guess that you are one of these kind of people that everybody wants to work up. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about that. Yeah, hope, hopefully. I mean, that's, yeah, I think something that I realized and, and maybe was told by other teachers and people early on that, you know, you could be the best player in the room, but if you're awkward and grouchy and, and difficult to work with, then, then you aren't going to do so well. So. So yeah, that's it. I think that's certainly my attitude is, is always to try and be yeah flexible and yeah, just, you know, easy to be around. And I think that's it. I think that really is why a lot of people in this industry are successful, especially backing musicians, because that's it. You're there to kind of be mellow and not have too much of an ego mm -hmm. and, you know, serve for the music and for the artists. So. Yes. 
Yeah, it's important, definitely. There you go. Well, and so much of what I hear you playing is is in the pop realm because again, it's current. It's on TV. Is that your area of kind of favorite kind of music, or what do you like to play? Yeah, I mean, I like to play all kinds of things. Really, I love to play R and B and and more soulful things. I've been working with an artist recently called Matt Maltese, who I really love his music. It's it's still pop, but it's definitely more stripped back. The way we do it, it's just drum, bass, piano, and his vocal. Nice. You know, no click tracks or, or anything. Super simple. And he's got beautiful songs. And I, I think that, you know, that's always the, the, the thing that I, that I enjoy. It's just that for whatever reason, I can connect with the music and, and enjoy it. But that's true of the big pop stuff as well. I mean, I love pop. I love <laughs> pop shows, I think. You know, the Big Time Rush tour that I just finished, that was great, you know, for all of it. Yeah, you know, cryo and, and smoke and pop machines and, and, and fun, you know, kind of stage things. So, yeah, I love and and they have great, great pop songs. So, yeah, it's always about the music and, yeah, but pop, R&B, soul, kind of singer-songwriter, that's, yeah, definitely the realm I find myself in mostly. Nice. And do you have a particular bassist who inspires you, kind of the person that you draw upon going, oh, yes, this is this is who I like to sound like? Yeah, well, I think, you know, obviously people like James Jameson and Pino Palladino, they're, they're the people that um, certainly when I was in music college discovering about all these bass players, they were the ones that that resonated with me the most. I mean, obviously, Pino. I, I love that Pino is this kind of skinny Welshman who has <laughs> played with all these fantastic artists. I found, I found, I found that inspiring. Yeah, I, you know, as, as an English woman, and uh, just he obviously is so tasteful and has such a great tone and sound, and just makes these excellent choices. And then, kind of later on, uh, it's been like Tina Weymouth which and I didn't really learn about Tina Weymouth until much later on in Mm -hmm. in my bass playing time and I wish I knew about her sooner obviously the fact that she's female resonates with me but just her her style her her stage movements I think I think they're so interesting I mean I mean you know the whole Talking Heads and David Byrne move you know movement if you've seen Stop Making Sense that that movie is just I think it's really really cool and interesting and actually I interviewed um, Bobby Wooten the third who played in um, American Utopia David Byrne's Broadway show recently and he said it beautifully he just said when he was working through those parts, he, you know, was maybe trying to add his own, you know, little licks and little extra things, as one does. And but then he realised just all her parts were just so perfect; they didn't need anything else. They were just excellent as they were. Um, I think that's so true. I think, I think, yeah. I mean, you think of Psycho Killer that as a baseline is just it's it's fantastic. So yeah, certainly those bass players. There's there's so many that. That inspire me, but um, they're the ones that come to mind. There you go. Well, and you're in a unique position as well because you've been kind of you originally in London, but now in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I find that especially with music, there's kind of a geographic isolation, and that hence they referred to when the Beatles and the Stones the British invasion Absolutely. because before there they were containing like it was only with the American performers and. The way that the media managed it, radio being the big thing at the time, they pretty much selected what we were hearing. And we would hear that ad nauseum, so bang, 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 bang. But if you were to go anywhere else in the world, there's such a richness of other musics and other things. At least you've had the opportunity to see you know, what's going on. There are British acts I'm sure I don't know about that you might go, oh, no, these are fabulous. Yeah. Whereas, because what they've done here, and I think it's opening up because of the internet, but... Yeah. yeah. It, it is it, funny, though. I do have those moments when I'm, you know, with American friends and a, a song. You know, I have lots of British friends here as well, so maybe we'll be talking about a certain song. Or Actually, I think it was at my my friend's wedding. She's Irish, and but she lives in Los Angeles, and mm-hmm. she had a wedding in Ireland, and there was certain songs that the DJ were playing that we were all like, wow! And... <laughs> The American people were like, 
what you know because that just didn't make it and yeah. so yeah it's still a it's still a thing but i think that's it with the internet now it's it's slowly just meshing into one you know one big load of music one big world music and since yeah. we're talking about sound we should talk a little bit about how you get your sound what are you playing on yeah um so i play on Mainly four string basses I lean towards because I play short scale basses. Okay. There is a few short scale five strings in the market. I would love to investigate some more. I do have a five string. It's um, a Fender Player Plus Jazz. Beautiful blue bass from Fender. And I tend to play short scale. They're called Modern Player Jazz basses. And so they're short scale jazz basses with a PJ pickup configuration. Mm -hmm. On some of them, I've replaced the pickups with Aguilar pickups. I'm endorsed by Aguilar. I love Aguilar. I use the Tone Hammer head pretty religiously. If I'm if I'm not using a cab on stage, which you know is in the pop sphere, you know, more likely that they don't want a cab on stage. I always still use my Tone Hammer head because I think it's just such a wonderful sound. And you can use the head like it's a DI. It's great, it's dual voltage, so if I'm touring in other countries, going back to England, it still works. But if I do have a cabinet, then I have my Aguilar 115, and that's great, it's lightweight. For its size, it's just, it's mighty, but it's it's great because it is quite light. I live up a, a load of stairs on top of a hill mm-hmm. <laughs> in Los mm-hmm. Angeles, so the fact that I can lug it up the stairs after gigs is really good and easy. And yeah, and then I'm using DR strings. So I use the high beam short scale set that's uh, 45 to 105s. And for effects, a lot of the times now it depends on the act. More often than not, I'm using an amp modeling kind of thing for effects at the moment. So recently I was using the HX Stomp on Big Time Rush with. Black Bear, I was using a neur- Neural Quad Cortex, they're called. I hadn't heard of them before. They're, uh, uh, you know, similar to a Kemper. And and I really like that, actually. That was very user-friendly. There's a big screen. I was kind of saying it feels like the kind of Tesla of, <laughs> of these, these um, modeling units. Yeah, very user-friendly. So I'm enjoying that. I think the benefit of that for me, like, I love, I love using pedals. If I'm, if I'm using pedals... I love my Tech 21 sounds that bass driver. Mm-hmm. I love. I just love that as a as a as a tone. You know, as before anything else. I and mean, you know, I have big muff things like that for overdrive. But obviously, the benefit of using something like a Kemper or this neural quad cortex is being able to put MIDI changes for different effects. Mm. So if I'm on a wireless pack, doing something silly over the other side of the stage. I don't have to worry about pressing a button. It's all automatic because it, it lines up with the the show. Most pop shows you'll be playing along to some kind of backing track thing. We'll have a click track. Mm-hmm. And so everything's connected through that. All the program changes, the, the changes in the lights, the, the video, everything is connected. So, so yeah, that's a huge benefit of using that. But pedals, pedals are great too. You know, it's, it's definitely... Yeah, the biggest change in, in technology over the last few years, I think. Gotcha. Well, and as we look ahead, because again, you do so many things, and again, we 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 pl- talked mostly about your performance stuff. But what plans do you have for the future? What things are you involved with? What what projects are in the works? Well, so yeah, I just did some shows with Black Bear that will be that will, that were really fun and. Maybe we'll have some more stuff in the future coming up. I have uh, another show with Big Time Rush coming up soon. And we have a, a tour in South America next year, oh. which I'm really excited about. Um, I've never been. So we go to Brazil and Colombia and Argentina, I think. I need to check. <laughs> this is the thing with touring. You never know when you're going, where you're going. But um, yeah, it's about five dates, I think. And yeah, I can't wait for that. Yeah, you know, the music industry is always very last minute, so we will see what else comes up. I have a tour with this artist, Matt Maltese, coming up as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, some other things, like maybe I, I can't say yet. But yeah, some, some good things are coming up, and yeah, I can't wait. Very nice. And if people want to stay on top, because there's obviously so many things happening, 
Best place to look, sheplaysbass.com? Yep, that's my website. My Instagram is sheplaysbass as well. Nice. Yeah, uh, my Facebook page, I think, is also sheplaysbass, but I think it might be forward slash Vicky Warwick Music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're the best places to reach me. Nice. Well, Vicky, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with us and share the insights as your journey and all the stuff that you're doing. I encourage people to check out what you're doing and look at your website. Folks, you've seen her here, Vicki Warwick on Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks for having me.